Happy Saturday, everyone. Josh, is severe weather. I hope everybody was safe during the storm here the last couple of days. Boy, was it a historic one and uh, quite a bit to talk about here in the coming weeks. And we've got a big pattern flip coming. I'm going to share my screen and talk about all the details with you. Uh, it's, it's a little delayed, but we are going to see some much colder air eventually making its way eastward here later next week. And in particular, um, the third week of March is going to be much below average. And I think that chillier uh, weather pattern continues to kind of stick with us as we head into, I want to say astronomical spring here, which starts in a few weeks and maybe even into early April, we have below average temperatures. That's something we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, really going back to about Christmas time where much of the country was below average, we're going to see something on a smaller scale here coming up over the next few weeks. Um, towards next weekend, we've got our eyes on the East Coast right now a little bit too soon to make any any calls on anything, but the storm signal is there for potentially a significant storm on the East Coast. And behind that, we have a return of a threat for maybe some freezing temperatures close to the Gulf Coast, maybe into northern Florida here. Uh, later on next weekend, you know, it's really weird. We've been in a pattern where, gosh, the last several weeks, it's been a warmer than average week. And then the warm weather takes the weekends off in the east. Um, <laughs> and I have no idea what's causing that other than that it's just a recurring cycle. But boy, has it been uh, a little bit annoying for some of you who want to get outside and enjoy warm weather and have to work during the week. And then over the weekend, it's not quite so nice. But I guess we're just going to have to take what we can get here. Uh, yesterday was a very active day across the uh, Mid-South into the Midwest. Uh, we saw over 180 storm reports um, of severe weather. That was actually more than the day before back in Texas. There were only about 100 and, well, I guess it's about the same, but um, as they confirm these storms and tornadoes, obviously you can see a very active day, a historic storm um, in parts of the Eastern United States and a lot of wind with this. Not Fortunately, not as many strong tornadoes as maybe as there could have been, but boy it was windy and um you can see from the weather prediction center uh definitely a historic storm uh when you look at surface pressure the lower the pressure the stronger the storm the more the wind and uh, many places in the uh, lower ohio valley kentucky and i saw the lowest surface pressure on record so definitely historic and i know there are a few people that um didn't like the fact that i used the term historic in some of my videos and you know obviously giving me a hard time for that. All I can say for those folks is bless their hearts. So <laughs> look, I don't, I don't put anything out here without giving it some serious time and effort and knowing what I know about meteorology. I'm not one of those persons that just wants to fear monger every single time there's a potential event. I am going to talk about major events and talk about possibilities, but uh, listen, what you see here is what you get with me. There's no fluff. So I just wanted to make that clear to everybody, not to go on the defense or anything like that, but this is a major storm. I mean, if you look at these winds in Kentucky yesterday, gusts to around 79 miles per hour in Louisville, the day before 80 miles per hour in Fort Worth, this was no, uh, nothing to not take seriously. Even though everybody didn't get it, that doesn't mean some folks didn't. I mean, parts of Southern Ohio, like you look at Chillicothe and Pe Peebles had wind gusts over 80 miles per hour. And parts of eastern Kentucky had wind gusts over 65 miles per hour. This is a very serious storm. And unfortunately, there have been some fatalities between the flooding in Arkansas and the winds taking trees down and putting on people's homes and cars in parts of Alabama and Mississippi. We had fatalities, Kentucky as well. So um, fortunately, this is a well-predicted storm and the numbers were not much higher. Um, and I'm very glad that worked out. But anytime somebody dies, I take that obviously very seriously. It's something that potentially could have been prevented in my opinion even though some things are just a little bit too insane um you know at any time we get this kind of weather we've got to worry about life and property so sad events to say the least uh we had thunder snow last night in parts of michigan and upstate new york into new england we still have winter storm warnings for uh, central new england with advisories over uh, central and western new york and down into the boston area and down to hartford as well as in central Maine. Uh, farther north, we're going to miss out on much snow here in northern Maine. Uh, but yeah, intense weather. I mean, even like Toronto and parts of Ontario just got blitzed with very heavy snow. Chicago kind of missed out on this one. You, if you'd seen my post a few days ago, you knew that I thought something weird was up. Um, and Chicago still really needs to see a decent snow if you like snow, and we really haven't had one. Um, that could change in the next couple of weeks, or we could get missed again, and I don't have the definitive answer to that, unfortunately. Um, I, I wish I could play God with the weather, but that just isn't going to be the case. Um, so we will see. 
a colder weather pattern certainly is no guarantee, but it also gives you guys at least some hope uh, for maybe still some wintry weather, even though we're in March now and the pollen is is building up to the Ohio River as we speak. Man, it's really sick here in the Carolinas how much pollen we've had already. Uh, typically, we don't see this until the third and fourth week of March. Uh, we saw it in the third and fourth week of February. So everything's about a month ahead of schedule. Uh, another storm out west, winter storm warnings for the coastal ranges and into the Sierra Nevada. Not like it matters for them at this point what's a few more feet. Uh, but even the interior of the west, we'll see some significant snow. And then as we head to early next week, we now have winter storm watches posted again in the Dakotas, central Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin for what could be another significant snowfall. South of this area, uh, we are going to see primarily rain. Uh, we'll see high winds again in the uh, southern Rockies, uh, more fire weather conditions, and we still have some strong wind to deal with today over the central Appalachians and over to the Jersey Shore and uh, flash flood warnings or watches for Long Island and southern Connecticut along the Long Island Sound. So uh, while things are quieter, we still have kind of an active storm track over the next uh, several days. Um, I want to show you all periweather.com's radar and whoops, went a little bit too far in there. Sorry about that. Uh, but you can see still a storm in progress here across the Northeast, well, mainly New England. Uh, it has gone over to rain around Boston, especially on the South Coast, snow to the north and west of Boston and a wintry mix in between. Uh, funny that the model showed quite a bit of snow in Boston. That could still happen, but we're in a period this morning where uh, things have flipped over to some more frozen and liquid precipitation, depending on what side of town you're in. And obviously, New York City is done with the snow. Hartford dealing with a wintry mix, but quite a bit of snow still in Albany. Uh, southeastern New Hampshire, we do have a little bit of mixing going on here at the coastline around Dover and uh, Portsmouth. But uh, you can see kind of a, a messy morning here across central parts of New England. When you get farther north and west, it's snowing pretty hard. Burlington getting quite a bit of snow. And between Burlington and Montreal, right at the border, that's where our heaviest snow is falling this morning. And that will spread farther east towards Augusta, Maine. But when you get north of Bangor into central Maine, those numbers do come down as drier air winds out. So this storm's still going to be around today. It will eventually shear itself out as we get to the day tomorrow. And you can see on the HER model, uh, our total snow, let me back this up to the 6E so I can show you farther out. Our total snow does pile up pretty quickly this morning. Looks like the presidential range uh, and the mountains of Vermont and into uh, New York State are going to see potentially over a foot of snow falling. Not all that's going to stick, but most of it should. Um, but as we get to Boston, those amounts come down only just a few more inches of snow expected uh, and mainly on the backside since we have already kind of switched over. So, yeah, there will be heavy snow in here. Not a blockbuster storm, but one that will be significant. A lot of that snow is heavy and wet. Still some thunder and lightning possible, although I think the worst happened last night while you were asleep. Um, but, yeah, this storm should eventually start winding itself down here um, as we get later into this afternoon, into tonight. And amounts should weaken uh, after that point. All right, let's take a look uh, now into the future and see what's on tap here for the next week. You can see the jet stream, which has been super active across the south, is going to be active here across California later this weekend, another kind of atmospheric river. And that is going to shift northward and bring our chance for rain and storms farther north. And at that point, uh, we are going to have more chillier air in place. So this is going to be more of a winter storm setup for the upper Midwest and into the Great Lakes region here. The jet stays pretty active, but the uh, values come down some. As you can see, the next uh, push of moisture comes into California and the Northwest here later next week. And another kind of atmospheric river, you can see that being shown here on this upper air cha chart. These brighter colors coming straight across the Central Pacific are aimed more to the north. We have a change coming. There'll be a ridge in the west. And this is more of the pattern that we saw earlier in January for California. A lot of rain and mountain snow coming in. Um, especially for Northern Cal and Southern Oregon. But you can see we now have a trough in the east, uh, kind of a, another strong low, but it's diving a little bit farther south and tracking farther southeast. And this time, rather than that upper low cutting up through the lakes, according to the European, it is cutting down through the Carolinas and uh, Virginia, and that will allow colder air to come down south and eastward uh, with this storm system. So a colder flip coming. Now, it's not going to be brutally cold, at least for most of us, but it will be cold enough to support a flip in the weather pattern. And I'm going to show you more about what's uh, what's to be expected. Here's the European model. Here's our storm leaving the area tonight. Next storm moving into California this weekend and then spreading on to the northern plains here Sunday night into Monday. 
and we'll see snow falling from the Dakotas into Wisconsin and into Michigan, Detroit mainly on northward, and maybe a few thunderstorms popping up here in Illinois and Iowa. Not going to be a big severe weather outbreak at this point, though. We're, we're lacking some of that moisture. This storm's going to kind of track more south and eastward into Pennsylvania. We could see some more snow falling Monday night into Tuesday morning. And that will dive off the coast and follow with some colder weather. Oh, gosh, what happened to my zero Z? Here we go. I had to reset everything because my uh, my um, my recording software kind of crapped the bed. So I apologize. Everything I had loaded, I've got to kind of re go through with you guys here. But thanks for being patient. Um, and then, as you can see, the middle of the week here, uh, we do have some rain and storms again in Texas and Oklahoma. Nothing as severe but there's a minor chance we could see a little bit of hail and strong winds around the Red River Valley. And unfortunately, more unwelcome rain here for Arkansas and Missouri and into Kentucky. But you can see this storm track is farther southward uh, on the uh, European model, and it tries to cut up to the Great Lakes, but gets deflected by a colder air mass in place. The GFS continues to want to just slice right through the cold, but the Euro says, no, we're going to go farther south and east as this colder air moves in. And this will mean more wintry weather perhaps for the mid-Atlantic, but more likely for the Appalachians and Western and Central PA and eventually into New England. And this is just one model solution. Not every model shows it, but definitely something more notable here in places like Philly and Central Jersey, New York City. I mean, it, the low is, it's coming in this direction, so it's not a favorable nor'easter track. It's kind of more cutting out to sea, but we may have enough cold air in place for something more significant here next weekend. So that's something we're going to be watching for you guys. Snowfall totals from the European, let me go back to the zero Z, and you can see uh, we're going to get crushed again in the west here with up to five feet of snow in, in, the, in the, uh, Sierra Nevada and two or three feet in the uh, ski areas of Wyoming and Utah. So another big storm out west, and uh, that follows with yet another one in the northwest here next weekend and a lot more snow moving into the snowpack area. This is great for um, helping to solve the, the long-term drought problems, but it is also going to be significantly impactful, causing more travel problems here next week in the West. As we move on to the Plains, you'll see that it's going to be a pretty snowy week here, another major snowfall according to the European. Um, and even around the Twin Cities, we could see a foot of snow and south and west of you in the Dakotas, perhaps more than a foot and a half to two feet of snow. And then as we track eastward, we can see um, most of the snow is from this weekend storm, but as we get on into next weekend, perhaps another significant snowfall here in the mid-Atlantic. Let me uh, back that up so you guys can see. This is just one model, but you can see it cuts through Chicago uh, with potential significant snow, and then right across Ohio, it does miss the I-70 corridor, unfortunately, again. Uh, but then when we get into Pennsylvania, this has the, uh, the look of yet another significant East Coast storm. Um, and maybe Philadelphia and New York City get in on this. Maybe they don't. It just really depends on the storm track. But something to watch for next weekend, um, right on into this region that seems to have been, been kind of getting missed every single time. So uh, the reasoning we see this flip, first of all, this is the Madden-Julian oscillation. It, it shows the cycling of waves across the Pacific. And it is going to be cycling into an MJ08, and that favors winter in the central and eastern United States this time of the year. It favors a more wintry look with colder air coming down south and east. And not only does it get into phase eight, but it sticks around and it intensifies. We have some models that show it kind of almost towards the extreme end of this. So uh, very much uh, if you're a winter weather fan in the east, this is something you'd like to see. As we go into phase eight through about the 15th of March, it looks like, and possibly even longer than that, depending on which model you like, and then going into phase one after that. So this is uh, definitely a flip that gives us some late winter weather. Um, so that's what I'll be watching for you guys. Um, looking at the teleconnections, the Arctic oscillation is negative for the majority of the month of March and even into uh, April. And this means the colder than average side of the Arctic ends up on the North American side, not on the uh, Asian side, and certainly that favors cold discharges. The Eastern Pacific Oscillation, which has been super positive, goes to negative, and that allows us to see a ridge building into the west and a trough carving into the east here at the end of next week, and especially next weekend. It does show some uh, signs of maybe trying to go back to positive, maybe not. It's going to be back and forth on the model, so the certainty is not high, but this is what you want to see, uh, which will favor um, a squashing of that eastern United States ridge that we've had. 
Uh, looking at the North American oscillation, it is negative throughout the month of March, and that allows the colder air to lock into southern Canada and the northern and eastern United States. Um, this, um, this favors um, high pressure blocking northern Canada and Greenland. And as that blocks it, that keeps the storms from cutting up in that direction and allows them to come farther south and east. So this is favorable for winter weather. And the PNA is also negative for a while longer, but that goes positive by the end of the week into next weekend. And that means a strengthening ridge across the west, and that likely leads to a strengthening trough across the east. And I'm going to show you that here on the European weeklies. We can see we've had a lot of troughing in the west here. Those are the uh, cooler colors here in the west. But you can see uh, higher pressures building into northern Canada here later next week. And that is going to allow this cold that's been uh, troughing across the western U.S. to advance eastward and not just move through and, and be fleeting, but actually sticking around uh, right on through next week. Right around the 15th, we see well below average heights for this time of the year across the eastern United States. And that continues to lock in here into the week of the 20th of March. So we have below average heights in the east, and um, that continues even into early April. It's, it's not going to be as much of a departure from average, but uh, we don't see the brighter colors that we've been seeing here with this rich, subtropical ridge. That is finally getting pushed aside, and it's not going to be back in the picture here anytime soon over the next month, maybe until we get into the second week of April, but this will probably change again. Uh, that will lead to, see all this chill in the west? It is going to advance eastward later this week, and we have significantly below average temperatures across the eastern U.S. for the most part right on in the next weekend and the following week. These temperature departures uh, in the greens are 10 degrees below average. We see 15 to 20 below average in the interior of the west and the plains. Um, there is no sign of any significant warming anytime soon through the end of the month of March, according to the Euro weeklies until we get on into maybe the middle of April when things go back and forth. This does not mean we couldn't have heavy rain and severe weather down south. In fact, I think that comes back again. But what it does mean is we don't see record warmth in the east anytime soon. So quite a flip. If you are planting the plant, you obviously are going to want to hold up on that until we get later into the month of April. Uh, the climate forecast system, which tends to be biased to be too cold, and you can see that here, still shows um, that cold signal for much of the central and eastern U.S. right through the month of March and even continuing somewhat into April. I think this might end up being too cold. Um, the climate forecast system does that from time to time, but you can see there's no signs of any above average warmth on, on, a, on a more permanent basis anytime soon. Uh, and then let's look at snow. This is the GFS ensemble, and you can see as we head on into, let me go back. Oh, oh no, this is through the 6C. You can see the west obviously gets a lot of snow, but as we spread to next weekend, the Great Lakes get in on some snow. Um, and as we get into the following week, the eastern United States sees at least uh, a higher potential for potential snowfall. Not necessarily the southeast, but the Appalachians and the mid-Atlantic region. And if I show you all the European here, you'll see it actually looks even snowier. Here's the ensemble mean. Uh, and let me uh, let me go back here. We'll look at the weeklies. Whew, okay, and that's the 32 day. And you can see there's at least a, a chance. It's not a big one all the way down to the Red River and into the Carolinas here over the next month. Uh, looks like New England definitely is going to see a bunch of snow. The West will see a ton of snow. And this region here has favorable storm tracks right on through the month of March. And finally, we'll look at storm tracks. And this is where things are going to differ the most in the shorter term. And you can see the European ensemble shows uh, strong high pressure coming down here. This allows the cold to go right into this direction, directly southeastward, and uh, colder than average temperatures here due to the strong high bleeding down the Rockies. So this, if it were midwinter, if it were January, would mean we've got record-breaking cold everywhere. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but something we'll be watching. And then you can see the storm track here. Uh, favors the eastern United States next Friday and then the east coast here over the weekend. So we'll see where this low pressure goes. If it cuts up this way, then again, we deal with rain in the big cities. If it drops down into the Carolinas, we deal with mountain snow and potentially significant snow just inland on the east coast. This is next Saturday, Sunday morning, so eight days from now, and then moving out early the following week, followed by high pressure, which dives southeast and produces significant cold. I had a graphic that showed temperatures. 
and I don't know where it went. And I apologize, but I wanted to give you all a, a, a taste of what temperatures may look like. Uh, let's see here. So I, this is pivotal weather. This is the European uh, ensemble prediction system. And here are temperatures so you guys can see all the cold that's locked into the West. But look at the southeastern United States here next week. It does start warm, but then we lose all these red colors. It's warm in Texas for a few more days, but Thursday into Friday, we see much cooler weather. And then here's the weekend, 40s in the daytime across much of the South, all the way down to I-20, 50s on the Gulf Coast. Even Florida, we're going to need jackets with temperatures in the low 70s during the day dropping into the 50s and 60s at night. Uh, Chile in the east, teens and 20s, right on into the beginning of the week of the 13th. And um, we do, I believe, see a frost and freeze threat. You can see this is Wednesday the 15th, the Ides of March, 30s down to Atlanta and Raleigh and even uh, Charleston, South Carolina, 40s into Florida. And uh, a few of these, this is the, the mean of all the models, a few of the operational models show that these temperatures could even end up being colder than this. So while it's not an onslaught of brutal polar vortex cold like we saw back in December and then early February in New England, it is still gonna be significantly colder than average for a longer period of time. So be prepared for that. Anyway, um, I thank you for y'all's time today and I will have more for you early next week uh, as we try to pin down the storm track later next week and over the weekend, uh, certainly the East Coast should be watching, but the Great Lakes should be watching as well. And um, if you could like and subscribe, uh, like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you're not going to miss anything. I'm going to take tomorrow off from videos, but if there's any major weather, I'll be sure to post about it in the community page. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you. And uh, I want to give all the glory to God. First uh, Corinthians. Um, 56 to, to 58 for sin is the sting that results in death and the law gives sin its power but thank god he gives us our victory over sin and death through our lord jesus christ so my dear brothers and sisters be strong and immovable always work enthusiastically for the lord for you know that nothing you do for the lord is ever useless and i think that is just a huge encouragement to me every day um being encouraged, knowing that I can be enthusiastic about what I share with you all publicly here, be enthusiastic about my love for the Lord and what he's done for me and many others in my life. And uh, just knowing that um, whatever you do matters. Uh, nothing is ever useless, whether or not you believe in the Lord, um, you believe in eternal life and salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, just know that he does give us victory over the sin and death. So whatever happens on earth, um, you know, isn't going to matter in the end. If you accept Christ, you're accepting that the Lord is going to be enthusiastically working in you no matter what and giving you eternal life. And I'm happy to pray for you if you struggle with this or if you're going through a difficult time. And I ask if you could pray for me because I want to continue to be enthusiastic about everything I do, whether a forecast busts or not, uh, whether we have, you know, people who don't like the videos, whatever happens. Um, I can't control it, but being enthusiastic. Uh, I'm serving the Lord, and he, as a return, is going to bless me in many ways, and I pray that he blesses you as well. Thank you all so much for your time. Have a great weekend. Stay warm out there. We'll talk again on Monday. Take care.